Grab your pencil, grab your paper, let's get ready to learn something. All right, so now we're on to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel's got a lot of stories in it. You've probably heard a number of times, um, but it's a very important book in the Bible, and it makes several different points, so let's dive on in. So 1 Samuel basically starts telling the story of Israel's monarchy, right? And so we're following the lives of mainly like the prophet David, or excuse me, the prophet Samuel, um, the ill-fated King Saul, you got God's ultimate choice of king, which is David. You get you mentioned Hannah in there as well. So there's a lot of big name characters in the in 1 Samuel. Um, but the main couple of points he's making is providence, kingship, and the reversal of human fortune. Those are kind of the main points that God is make is making through the first Samuel book. So um, let's just look at the first one, providence. So God repeatedly makes everyday events work for his purpose, right? And so we see that with uh, Hannah's relationship with uh, Penia, however you say that, in 1 Samuel. And then we uh, we are led to Saul, to Samuel during Saul's search for the donkey. You see them two get together. Um, and then you also see David learn about Goliath while he's bringing his older brother's food at the war site. Um, and so it was just a very coincidental a number of events that all brought these people into God's plan for them, right? And so, but that's just a few examples. Now let's go into kingship. So as a divine king, God designates David to rule over his people. Um, this history validates that David's house as a legitimate rulers of Israel. So um, we also see that Jacob's promise that the scepter would never depart from Judah, which is David's home tribe, right? You see that in Genesis 49.10. All right, and then you also see the re reversal of human fortune, though. You see that with, with Hannah, as she wasn't able to bear children. And just due to her faithfulness through God's plan, she was able to bear a son. Um, and if she did, it would end up giving away to children. And that was in Samuel 1, 28, and also in Samuel 2, chapter 2. Um, and then Samuel became a prophet instead of Eli's sons. So you see that fortune come into play. Uh, you also see Saul rise to prominence as he was from a lowly tribe. He wasn't from the typical people that come from royalty. He came from a very lowly tribe, so that was also coming around to the whole human fortune thing. Um, and then also David was appointed kings, even though he was the youngest son. Youngest sons at that time did not have any rights hardly. He was always the oldest. And so by him doing, by David kind of breaking that generational curse, if you will, and becoming the youngest appointed um, king, that showed that God's power was ultimately divine. And then also it just sees that like normal, normal human patterns were reversed by God so that his plan could be furthered, showing that his sovereignty was overall in control. For our animal spotlight today, we're going to be talking about mallard duck. So the mallard duck is very common here in Florida. Um, they're typically a winter resident here in Florida though. Um, and then they're uh, found anywhere you find with like southern swamplands, ponds, lakes. Um, they nest on the ground really close to the water. They lay up to 13 eggs and will re-nest if the nest is destroyed. They are by far the most familiar duck in America. The mallard has been widely domesticated but is also a very common wild duck in the United States. You see it in a lot of parks, they're highly adaptable, and it's actually the most successful duck species in America, perhaps even in the world. So for our financial topic today, we're going to be talking about student loans. It's kind of a very controversial issue right now, but nonetheless, I think it's important that you know what they are and how they work. So student loans are basically a federal loan that you can get. So if you want to go to college, let's just say it costs you $20,000 in tuition. You can get a loan, aka student loans, to pay for college. Now, here is the, the case. It seems awesome. And it is a good thing for a lot of people if they don't have money to go to college initially. They can get that loan when they don't have the money, and they can pay it off after they get a degree when they have jobs that can pay back the loan. The problem is, is that you have tremendous interest with these student loans. Astronomical interest. And it, it, um, I wish I had a graph here that could show you the amount of interest that accumulates. So the biggest key with student loans is as soon as you get your job, get out of college, 
pay those things off as soon as possible. If you ever want to build any wealth, pay it off as soon as possible. Because let's just say you got a $20,000 student loan. Let's say it was just something minute, like 5% interest. I'm pretty sure they're a little higher than that, like 5 or 6%, um, percent, somewhere around in there. So not only in 20 years are you going to have that $20,000 you got to pay back, you now have 20 years of 5%, 6% interest on top of that. So you end up paying much more than you initially invested in. If you don't have a job that pays a lot, this can be hard to ever dig yourself out of that hole. So it's important to, as soon as you get out of school, pay those student loans off as quickly as possible so you're able to build that wealth that you want to build. It's pretty cut and dry, but again, not advocating either way for them, but that's how they work. <laughs> so for our history spotlight today, we're going to be talking about the War of 1812. Now this war was between the uh, newly established America versus the old huge naval power Great Britain. This was basically due to Great Britain still trying to impose all these restrictions on us and also due to the Americas or the America wanting to branch out and expand its own territory. During the war, the uh, America suffered many defeats. We actually were we actually had our capital burned during the War of 1812 in Washington DC um, in 1814. The war finally ended with the Treaty of Ghent. I could be mispronouncing that, um, but nonetheless, the war ended. Um, the War of 1812 is also called the Second War of Independence, and this began the era of partisan agreement and national pride. And a quote from Vince Lombardi, Perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you learned something. Catch you back here tomorrow.